Welcome to episode three of Podcast Americano. I am your host, Nate, and joining me today is... Sean Fahey. All right. What's and up? <laughs> the uh, reason I have Sean on today is uh, we're going to talk about uh, the reason why we don't smoke weed, because we waste all of our money on Criterions. That's a very good reason, yeah. <laughs> That's a smoke, yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, Also our financial... Um, just crisis all the time we're spending our money on criteria yeah yeah it's a problem it's an addiction it's terrible it's just as bad as cocaine uh so we just came off of a um, huge uh, criterion sale at barnes and noble and um both of us respectfully picked up a couple copies mm-hmm. uh all mine or no all of mine except one was a blind buy uh, were all of yours blind buys? No, I've seen I've seen all of the movies I bought because I have film struck. I don't really do blind buys because I can okay. just like I can just watch them online. But if I like them enough to buy them, I'll just go get them at Barnes and Noble or on the website. But yeah, I've seen all of mine. Okay. Um, okay, maybe I should have addressed this earlier, but you know, maybe some of you listening right now are like, "What the hell is a Criterion?" And <laughs> What's a Criterion? What is this? I know. I think you will be able to explain what a Criterion is better than I am because I've only been collecting them for about a year. Okay. Um, so Criterion Collection is a home video distribution company which specializes in. Um, I am being paid by the Criterion Collection, by the way. No, I'm I wish. We're, we're three I, yeah. episodes in and we get a sponsor. That would be amazing. <laughs> That'd be fucking incredible. Um, so, yeah, they're a home video distribution company that deals... Uh, they deal with mainly art house films and experimental foreign films, but they also deal with, like, uh, Hollywood popular films. And they're a great video or DVD and Blu-ray distribution company because they get support from the filmmakers and from the people who are like you know invested in the creative quality of the movie so they get them on board to uh restore films to provide like um commentary and like video essays on the dvds and on their um streaming website filmstruck so they're like they're like uh the gold standard for you know art house and uh foreign film just movies in general distribution to you know just p- film buffs like us who want to spend millions of dollars on them every year oh god yeah this thanksgiving was fucking hell for me <laughs> because i got like a late birthday present from my grandmother and i just blew it all on criterion yeah because <laughs> and then i spent like this half this past week like in a financial crisis but that's a different story yeah <laughs> um so that's my uh plug for criterion yeah um I mean, the way I got into Criterion was I kind of just <coughs> randomly stumbled upon it. I mean, one of my favorite movies of all time is uh, Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove, mm-hmm. and uh, I already have like a pretty large uh, Blu-ray collection, so I was just looking for a uh, Blu-ray of Dr. Strangelove, and I couldn't really find a normal Blu-ray. What came up was a Criterion collection thing, so uh, I didn't give much mind to it. I bought it, and then when I got it, you got this like little nice box set with a whole bunch of like little booklets and uh like behind the scenes commentaries and a whole bunch of other really neat things that um you don't really get with the the normal movie watching experience Mm -hmm. so uh ever since then i've just been collecting a bunch of like wes anderson's films a couple of like those uh french neo-noir movies like uh just at the sale i picked up um Lay Samurai and uh, one of my friends from home, Let Me Borrow Rafifi, both of which are fantastic movies. Highly recommend them. Love them so much. I could recommend Le Samurai. I haven't seen Rafifi yet. That's a. Uh, I don't know, just gotta be. So, yeah, um, I got into Criterion like pretty young because uh, when I first got into movies, like one of the first screenplays I like attempted to write was about um, uh, a group of like like high school bicycle thieves oh yeah yeah i think i told you this story but like um then i started i got into like movies like third man and then i went to barnes and noble one day and i found this movie called bicycle thieves and i'm like oh damn somebody beat me to it yeah so i bought it in hopes for like inspiration to write my own movie and then i was incredibly disappointed with it because i didn't understand what neorealism was and how depressing the movie was but then I was like, eh, whatever, you know. But then, you know, it grew on me, 
and you know you see the Criterion logo and like oh that's kind of special so then you know that's when my you know Criterion's great because if you like have a fascination with movies then and you want to see how like great art house and world cinema is it's like a great you know starting place to like get into all those um fields and movements across the world like you know i watched bicycle thieves and then i was obsessed with you know neorealism you know the beginnings of lucina visconti roberto roberto rossellini saw rome up in city for the first time after seeing bicycle thieves it's um yeah and then like i counted this weekend because when you asked me to do this interview um our co-host thing i have like it like 98 criterions later i'm here so <laughs> Damn, yeah, it's a, it's a journey. Yeah, and uh, like I mentioned on the <coughs> previous episode, uh, I was talking about how, as a filmmaker, it's really important that you watch movies and watch movies from all over the place, and Criterion gives a lot of great access to all of that. You know, they're not necessarily films that you run into by going to a movie theater mm-hmm. or by uh, browsing on Netflix. Um, I mean, you mentioned Filmstruck, which is their web streaming service, and uh, that's a great way to like introduce yourselves uh, to those kind of films. There's also another small streaming service that's offered by a couple of uh, colleges and libraries called uh, Canopy. Um, you could probably check that out for yourself, but there are some uh, great uh, Criterion titles on that. They have a lot of uh, Kurosawa films, mm-hmm. um, which I think we could probably have like a small discussion about Kurosawa, because that was another uh, one of the first Criterions that I watched. I watched uh, Seven Samurai. Mm-hmm. That's one of the uh, first ones I bought, too. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't own it. That one was another one that I borrowed. It's like the first one I bought from their website, oh, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Where can I start with Kurosawa? It's like a... I think Sidney Lumet called him the Beethoven of cinema. Yeah, in a way, yeah. He's just God. Where where do I where do I start with Chris? I guess in relation to Criterion, um, the cur- the Samurai and Samurai box set, along with like a lot of other Criterions, you know, you get these great um, versions of the movies. You have these great like uh, restorations and stuff, but like. What's ultimately, I think, the film nerd's paradise is all the special features. Because you watch, like, interviews with um, the production designers and people who work at, like, Toho Studios who, like, spent time with Kurosawa and, like, worked on the movie. And also, I think there's an interview with um, the film critic Donald Ritchie about, like, how amazing (laughs) Seven Samurai is. Yeah. Yeah, I could just go on for hours about how amazing, you know, Kurosawa in general is. But, like, the Criterion box set, it's the second, you know, Criterion box set in the Criterion collection. And, you know, it's a great way, it's a great place to start, you know, if you don't mind a three and a half hour black and white Japanese movie. It's totally well worth whatever money it's worth on Criterion. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, going back, um, I mentioned Kurosawa specifically because uh, a lot of American films take influence from here. Almost Mm -hmm. every western from the 50s and 60s yep it has kurosawa references um star wars is very much Are you telling me the magnificent seven isn't a rip on seven samurai <laughs> is this what this is now and that uh yohimbo was not stolen by sergio leone and made into a fistful of dollars that's mm. not real right maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's not real uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, watch Criterions, and maybe you too can make a Western adaptation that is a rip-off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can take Jarmusch's advice and just steal constantly and get away with it. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Jarmusch. Oh, Dead Man. Do you, do, you, do you see that? No. They're announcing a Dead Man 4K restoration. Okay. Criterion. I'll probably check that out. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, God. You know, 2018 is going to be interesting because they've never, like, advanced... Um, will advance uh, announce a movie like that before mm-hmm. so I don't know this could be, this yeah. be interesting there are a lot of really like unexpected movies that are coming to the collection soon yeah. Breakfast Club was one of them that I didn't yeah. expect a lot, I've been having a lot of debates about this like I don't mind that they're um, having a lot of you know popular films on the collection I do find it's a bit odd but I don't mind it because I like Breakfast Club they're doing Signs of the Lambs as well. Yeah. But, um... Signs of they, the Lambs I see, like, more realistically going into the Criterion Yeah, collection. because it was... But Breakfast Club is, like, Breakfast kind of a Club curveball. Is, real, is a really... Yeah, that's a curveball. Yeah, um, like, it, it feels like it was taken straight from, like, the fake Criterion Tumblr page. 
And they're like, oh, that's, people want that's, that's, <laughs> a breakfast club. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't mind it because it is a good movie. Uh, there is a small part of me that's wishing um, that more, you know, obscure f- and I think, I don't know, maybe... God. I wouldn't want to say important because I think The Breakfast Club is an important move, an important movie for American cinema in the eighties. But um, you know, at the same time, they are releasing like new films by G W Paps. At the same time, uh, I just hope that like you know, with the revenue they get from like uh, Breakfast Club, that they can like you know get some I don't know Jalofsky, Teo Angelopoulos, mm-hmm. you know, just like all the really outside you know European kind of cinema. And more experimental films, but you know that's just me. I don't yeah. represent all of Criterion. And uh, Criterion, it's not just old movies. I mean, you have like almost all of uh, Wes Anderson's filmography on mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And uh, Olivier Assayas. Oh yeah. I, I might have been saying that wrong, but uh, his Olivier. Uh, but, yeah. Olivier. Yeah. Olivier Assayas. French. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah per- his two recent films were. Uh, Did you get Personal Shopper? Yeah, that's what oh. I got during the sale. For, yeah, that's. I, I saw that, that in theaters. So, yeah, me too. Haven't watched the Criterion yet, but yeah, Personal Shoppers, fantastic movie, one of my favorites of the year. Mm-hmm. I'm really, uh, yeah, I love when they release newer films that don't get like the lure. Like mm-hmm. uh, I never heard of the lure until I think I I only know the synopsis and the trailer. I yeah. really wanted to see that movie. It yeah, looks ho- really cool. Hopefully, it'll be on Filmstruck soon. But um, yeah, with uh, there's a tendency I think like. The people who go into the closet will sometimes get like a uh, a Criterion release. Like I know there's a lot of hype for Good Time getting yeah. a Criterion release. I mean, it's owned by A twenty four, so it's more than likely, or not more than likely. not more than likely because they do their own distribution. Oh, that's right. Okay. So maybe not, but maybe a future uh, safety but, title. Yeah, but um, they've done a lot of videos on their YouTube channel with the Safety Brothers, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean, I love them. They um, they clearly know what they're doing and if you've seen good time mm-hmm. it, is, it is a great film they have their earlier stuff on filmstruck oh yeah like uh with daddy long legs and i know they're short films that they released at can but like um yeah uh their newer releases like uh, kelly reichardt's certain women is a really great film um have you seen it or no, no? okay I, I recommend it's got michelle williams laura dern and uh one of the guys from Mad Men. He has Ooh. a really cool role in it. I forget what his name is. Um, but they, I, that's another thing. They, um, they uh, allow for these newer films that probably didn't get their lot, their their spot in the in the spotlight. That's such a weird ass sentence to yeah. say. Um, but they give them, you know, their due in you know the market, which I think is really cool. Like the lure, personal shopper, and you know certain women. Those are the yeah. two I can rattle off the top of my head right now. Yeah, and uh, going back to like all like the bonus features and commentaries that are on the Criterion's, uh, <coughs> I haven't watched all of mine yet, but I watched the ones that are on Doctor Strange Love, and more mm-hmm. recently. In uh, one of my classes, we watched the commentary for the uh, documentary Camera Person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Camera Person is awesome. Yeah, it, um, especially when it comes to me, because I'm a documentary editor, mm-hmm. uh, watching that commentary of the editor discussing that whole process of putting together the documentary um, Camera Person, which I highly recommend. It's very fascinating. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, watch all the documentaries that are featured in Camera Person, because <laughs> those are really cool. Yeah. Um, I've been... For the past, like, year, I've been obsessed with, on the Criterion for Blood Simple, there's, like, an hour and ten minute video with the two Coen brothers and their cinematographer at the time, Barry Seinfeld, and they're sitting at this table with all, like, compu- like laptops at their, on the table, and they're watching Blood Simple, and they detail how they did, like, every shot in the movie. Oh. Like how they, it's, it's called Shooting Blood Simple. It's on Filmstruck if you have it and the Criterion channel. Go watch it because it's the funniest shit ever. <laughs> They're literally, it's like you have these like, you know, 50 and 60 year old men watching this movie they made in their 20s and they were like, oh my god, who lit this? This is terrible. <laughs> like, what the hell is with the blue? With the Congo blue? Are you kidding me? It's like, and they talk about like falling asleep at the camera. And about how you can see the focus puller in shots, and that's why the shot's out of focus. Yeah. And stuff. And they talk about, like, meeting 
on the film circuit, they're like meeting with other cinematographers and then being like, you know, that's not right. Like uh-huh. light, light doesn't. There's a great story where Jill Cullen met um, Nestor Almandros, who shot uh, um, Days of Heaven, and I think Jean Astouche's uh, last movie, um, My Little Lovers. And he talks about how like the final scene is just like not right at all, oh, but, he, yeah. but he loves it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just it's so funny and it's so insightful about how like um, you know if you're just young and passionate and you really want to make movies, then you can do it. You know, I don't know. It's a, it's provided a lot of inspiration for me, and you know, Criterion just does that. Um, all you know, I guess even the movies I don't like by them are still like they're really good releases. I'd say great behind the scenes stuff mm-hmm, for sure um yeah just uh, just listing off a couple of the other uh criterions i have um okay i said lay samurai personal shopper um rafifi oh um is this the part where we list them all off i'm gonna be here forever if we list them all off especially yours this is uh, gonna be an hour-long podcast yeah and i'm not having that uh oh god i'm trying to just think because all my criterions are in the other room Mm -hmm. uh yeah um what's your what's your favorite of all the ones uh, maybe like all the ones you own of all the ones i own uh uh royal tenenbaums all right. I need. I still need to watch like the commentary behind that, but I think Royal Tenenbaums. Uh, I've seen it previously, so mm-hmm. it wasn't a blind buy for me. <clears throat> but like, that's just a movie I could watch over and over and over again okay. and enjoy it every time. Uh, same thing with Rushmore. All I mean, right. Wes Anderson is one of my favorite uh, directors, and uh, just his entire like mm-hmm. directorial vision. Uh, it, it just it's so pleasing to mm-hmm. watch. And uh, dialogue and the acting, it's so spot on. Mm -hmm. I I just can't, I can't get enough of Wes Anderson. And uh, Royal Tenenbaums, ah, God. It's like between that and um, Life Aquatic, which are my two favorite uh, Wes Anderson movies. Uh, But I think I've seen Royal Tenenbaums more than I've seen Life Aquatic. So maybe Royal Tenenbaums is like just a smidge up higher on my list of Wes Anderson movies. Mm-hmm. I think I've made the case for... Mo- I, I'm repping Moonrise Kingdom. Moonrise all Kingdom. All the way, that's my... I, I do have Moonrise Kingdom. That's yeah, mo- that's, a, that's a great addition for Criterion. Mm-hmm. I think my favorite Criterion movie, like, discounting, you know, all the special features, um, is probably Edward Yang's A Brighter Summer Day. Okay. Because I discovered that about two years ago... And it just immediately became, like, you know, one of my top ten movies of all time. I just think it's so beautiful. But um, in terms of, like, you know, a full-on Criterion edition, like, with all the special features and stuff, it's probably either Persona or Antichrist. Okay. Because Antichrist has, like, one of the funnest things ever, where they have a documentary crew follow Lars von Trier, Willem Dafoe, in uh, Charlotte Gainsborough around the Cannes Film Festival. And, like, watching Lars von Trier getting interviewed is just the funniest stuff. Because <laughs> it's like, why did you make this movie? I don't want to answer that question. No, fuck you, answer the question. It's like a literal interview with a guy at the Cannes Film Festival. And I'm like, holy shit, this is the movie business, and I want to be a part of it. And, um, yeah. but, um, yeah, and Persona is just, like, so dense with a huge-ass booklet huge ass ton of interviews with uh bb anderson and ingmar bergman um <clears throat> just yeah that's my those are my favorites mm-hmm. i'll say yeah um but god i could go on for like you know hours just talking about like you know the specifics of each one in my, in my collection and stuff and the uh i think what's you know what's kind of underrated in the criterion canon is the eclipse series do you have any no i know okay I have the Eclipse th- series. Oh, I've heard, yeah, I have heard of that, yeah. Okay, yeah, because it's like, you know, you have the, uh, they don't release them a lot anymore, but you have, like, the Criterion Collection, and then you have, like, all the other films that I don't think they can afford to, like, bring to that standard, but they have them in these, like, really cool box sets. Like, there's one of the early works of Rainer Werner Fassbender, which I have. These are just the ones I have. Um... The, uh, the Proletariat Trilogy from Aki Karishmaki, who's got a new movie coming on the way that I'm really excited for. And, you know, 
Robert Downey Sr. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they got his Midnight movies on okay, there, cool. which are just so fucking hilarious. Um, if you haven't caught on, that's Robert Downey Jr.'s father. No. Who was, no, really? <laughs> yeah, he was he was an independent filmmaker in New York in the 1960s, and probably one of the most subversive ones, if mm-hmm. you can believe it. Just despite that his son is Iron Man. <laughs> but... Hey, he was in some like pretty like oh, yeah, movies. Not, I mean, I'm, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Is that's yeah. yeah I'm one not. Of my I'm not completely writing off Robert Downey Jr. Uh, Zodiac is he's incredible. Yeah. In Zodiac, I love him in that. Um, yeah, it's I don't. There's just so much to talk about, I guess, and so much to like, you know, just completely yeah. obsess over when it comes. So, to So um, there are like some criterions that have been on like my um, watch list or buy list. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, me too. Just now I'm hoping that I get for Christmas, mom, dad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't. So uh, I have. Uh, I don't have the list pulled up, but I'm just gonna name them on the top of my head, and maybe you could like give some commentary on like mm-hmm. how good of a choice they are. Uh, oh yeah, well, this is my good. This is my good thing being completely judgmental about <laughs> other people's choices in movies. But go ahead. Uh, Desert Hearts. I've never seen it. Oh. I'm, have you seen it? No. Okay, I'm very interested in the plot, so I gotta check it out. All right, Desert Hearts. Okay, uh, the Before trilogy. Love it. I have it. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. I saw it. La- I saw it. La- I saw it for the first time last year. Have you seen it? You've no, seen no. It? I ha- all yeah, these but- that I'm naming, I have not seen. Oh, okay. Yeah, I watched all three of them in like a week, and they're just even more beautiful than after the other. I think. They're probably gonna get better with me for age because before before sunrise is like the millennial romance movie. Okay. And then like before sunset is like you know kind of the age I'm entering into now. You know, twenties, thirties, and then before midnight, I'm probably gonna love when I'm like I don't know, hopefully married and have a steady job or something like that. But okay. they're just um, they're so beautiful, All so right. so well written, so beautiful. You know, go for it. Buy it. I okay. It. <laughs> Buy it now. Get on fucking criteria. Buy it now. You you heard him. Uh, okay. Uh, another one was uh, the Three Colors trilogy. Yep. What? Get it. Oh, you haven't seen it? No, I haven't. Oh, you do have it? No, I don't have it, but I've seen them. Okay, you have seen so, them. So, like, why, why Why should I buy it? Why? Okay. Why? Um, <laughs> God, there's just... We have 30 minutes to do this? Well, like, just give... Just give uh, like, <laughs> okay, give, all right. Hey, throw it out. Um... <laughs> For one, great performances. Okay. Every single movie has just, like, the gold standard of acting. Juliette Binoche, uh, what's her, uh, Julie Delpy, who's in the Before Trilogy, and then, uh, Irene Jacob and Jean-Louis Tretignan in, in Red. They're just so watchable. When you think of, I guess the cliche about European art house cinema is that, you know, it's, um, it's very slow, it's very meditative. These movies are incredibly watchable. Like, you will, like, not be, you know, you're not going to get distracted by your phone or what's, like, on the news or something. You will be, like, totally engrossed in these films as you're watching them. Kijlovsky is, like, I mean, the word genius is thrown around, like, way too much in cinema, and probably for good reason, but, you know, Kijlovsky was... An incredible genius of you know Polish and French cinema. If you do get it, well, get it. I'm saying okay. get it. Uh, watch it in the movies are very loosely connected, but I'd recommend you watch them in the order of blue, white, red, because that's how I did. Okay. Whatever you do, watch red at the ending okay. because the ending of red just kind of like tears your heart out and then puts it right back, and you're like. Is that the order in which they were made, or the order? Yeah, the order they were made was blue, white, red. Okay. Um, but the colors you know, of the French flag. Colors you didn't of the French know. flag. You know, egalité, liberté, fraternité, okay. and those are the themes of the movie. But you know, I wouldn't like put those themes, label them to each film because they explore a lot more. And you know, if I can plug Kislovsky even more, <laughs> you know, check out the Decalogue. Decalogue, yeah, that's also on my list. Okay, that's incredible. Um, Blind Chance, The Scar. Um, these are a part of the Decalogue, but I think they're very interesting watches. You know, short film about love and short film about killing, mm-hmm. which are just, you know, incredible, you know, hour and a half movies. All right. So, um, 
Uh, you got more for me? Yeah, um, me so, um, two, two Italian movies, uh, okay. eight and a half. Get it? Eight and a half. Okay, give um, me. Okay, um, okay, I just saw Peeping Tom for the first time. Okay. Have you seen it? No. Okay, so Martin Scorsese has this really great quote about eight and a half, where eight and a half is all the joy and positive things about filmmaking. It's the complete, you know, the complete just beauty of imagination about filmmaking you know Francois I'm gonna keep quoting filmmakers and I look pretentious <laughs> as fuck it's because I am um you know Kripo, if, you can't, if you couldn't tell already <laughs> I'm yes I'm completely pretentious I don't know what I'm talking about um you know Truffaut said you know cinema should be about the joy of filmmaking or the complete like um brutality of filmmaking which I'm paraphrasing right now but eight and a half is like the complete joy of filmmaking okay as a you know, as an editor, as a director, you just watch it and you're like, you know, that's what I fucking want to do, man. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, I just want to be, I just want to create, you know, because, you know, I think I'm a god. Yeah. Uh, the but other pre- one. Pretension <laughs> alert. Yeah. Pretension alert. Yeah, Kanye West over here. Uh, the other <laughs> one is uh, uh, Largent. Largent, yep. I, I fucks with Brisson. Oh, okay. yeah. I fucks with Brisson. Um, you know, uh,. Brisson's movies, you know, contrary to a lot of, you know, the stuffy, um, I guess, European, you know, art movies that, you know, that's the cliche, you know, Brisson's kind of an outlier because his movies are always, like, very short. Um, Larjan is 80 minutes, Pickpocket, which I got in the sale, is 75 minutes, he has a movie about Joan of Arc, which is an hour long, so... Larjan as an 80 minute movie I'd say there's no excuse for anybody not to have seen it because it's just it's so it's such a brutal movie oh yeah and I you know, I just I saw it in 35 millimeter this summer which was you know an incredible experience and it's a really brutal but beautiful movie about how money sucks yeah <laughs> and i just got out of like a situation where i was just like you know fuck money i hate it <laughs> and uh which is partially due to criterion thanks criterion please yeah. represent me release one of my films when i'm famous but i'm not <laughs> yeah um uh anymore or well do um, i critique my wants and stuff oh uh, well i mean we're coming close to the end so if God, you have like just uh any like been closing <laughs> Remark to say. All right, I, I've, I've been thinking about, I wanted to ask you this. What What's a movie that's not in Criterion that you want to see on Criterion? Um, <laughs> I, I'll give, like, a really dumb answer. There, there um, are no dumb answers. I don't know. Well, you know, I have a dumb answer, but we'll get to that later. Well, because, uh, like, I always think, like, logically about this because there are, like, those, um, like, production companies that, like, have their hand dipped in, like, the distribution of the movies so they wouldn't just easily like handed over uh-huh. but i would love to see the original blade runner mm. because um yeah. just like the story behind like all the different cuts that that film went through the original the directors and the final cut um i've only seen the original and the final cut i haven't seen the director's cut um the final cut is I, I, yeah the final cut i agree is the best version mm-hmm. to watch that movie but in a way that movie is still very imperfect and um very flawed but still a masterpiece and i would love to like watch like the commentary <clears throat> that ridley scott would put onto that movie and uh if harrison ford is alive by the time <laughs> that that comes out yeah um uh, yeah I would... I would love to just hear his input on it and especially with uh 2049 mm-hmm. uh, coming out which is one of my favorites of the year uh i definitely like love to see a blade runner criterion release that'd be i'd i'd back that yeah Oh, God. So, you know, if multiple maniacs can get a Criterion release, I fucking want to see a Room Criterion release. Room? The Room. The Room. Yeah, I want to <laughs> see Tommy Wiseau get a Criterion release, damn it, you know? It's just, with all the with all the fucking hype that Disaster Artist has got, this is my joke answer, by the way. Like, I appreciate this, but I don't fully support it all the way. Okay. But, you know, if movies like Heaven's Gate, which, you know, was a critical failure back in its day... And, you know, John Waters can get Criterion releases, then fucking Tommy Wiseau should get a Criterion release. That's right. my joke answer. <laughs> my real answer from pretentious Sean Fahey is that I just saw this great documentary, I think I told you about it, 
called uh, Ty ZQ West of the Tracks. It's nine, okay. it's nine hours long. Oh. And it's incredibly depressing. And it's, like, shot on this really small digital camera. But it's just, like, such a terrible portrait of the 21st century oh. <laughs> industrial complex. And I think we're running over a bit. Oh, no, so, you're, you're, okay. you're fine. Keep okay, going. Okay, sorry. Um, but, you know, Showa is nine hours long. And it's got a kick-ass fucking Criterion release. So Showa's if we great. can get some... This director, I recommend, you know, completely. His name is Bing Wong. He's from China. I don't really know anything about him, but he's been releasing some, like, really fantastic movies ever since the the, the new millennia started. And, you know, I just gotta, like... I really want to know more about this guy. And he's, I think, very underrated in America today. So, I don't know, that's my... That's my if Criterion, if you're listening, you better listen to me. That's if you are listening, give us a sponsorship. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll shill out for you. I love you guys. All also, right. <laughs> also, I'm broke and I need that money. God. All right. Th- thank you, Sean, for uh, coming on this episode. Always Thanks good for, to have you. Thanks for having me. Um, all right. Uh, be sure to subscribe for future episodes. You can also follow all the links in the description below. Uh, leave some feedback in the comments. Thank you all for listening. And respect women.